Okay, Lorna's um, got me off the subs bench yesterday. She was talking about the people who normally organise this, and uh, she asked me whether I'd talk about those three things up there. Um, the first one I feel that I can talk about with a little bit of knowledge. The second one mm, I'm not that much of an expert in, but then again I'm not much of an expert in much. Um, and then community rights, we've got a little bit of information to share with you. So the first bit, um, as Lorna just mentioned, I've recently been asked if I would chair the community partnership in Dudley. And I'm under no illusions of why I've been asked to do that. It's because it's in a real time of flux. Um, community partnerships, LSPs, were the um, gift of the last government and in many areas they've already gone. In Dudley, we um, there's funding for our local strategic partnership till the end of the financial year. Beyond that, if we wish to have a community partnership in Dudley, we will need to look at how we sustain that locally. So it's quite a challenging time. Some people would say the poison chalice. Um, I probably would. But I think what I can bring to it at the moment is a bit of enthusiasm because I think what our sector brings is that partnership is really important, regardless of whether government says it's important. We think it is. Um, we don't operate in silos, and we think it's important that we operate with all of our partners locally. We're a key part of that. So that's where we're at with that. The last Dudley Community Partnership meeting, my first one as chair, we turned over almost in its entirety to looking at Air Society, Big Society stuff that, that Lorna was just describing. Um, and it, it's such a difficult thing to try and grapple with. What is Big Society? So what we try to do is, is ask all the partners around the table and the kind of partners who sit at that partnership, for those not that familiar, are people from the colleges, from the police, from the fire service, from the council, from the primary care trust from the voluntary sector, um, probably missed a few, but <coughs> gives you a flavour. Um, and what, what our facilitator got us to look at as partners were what the um, challenges of the current environment that we're all working in, this cuts agenda, this agenda of less resources, what challenges does that bring to the partners around the table? And what impact do we feel that might have on local residents? So when the colleges are making decisions about which courses to ditch, because the money isn't there anymore, when the council's having to uh, make cuts and services will stop. Thinking about the impact that will have on residents. We looked then at the strengths, opportunities and threats about what we were doing. We didn't focus on weaknesses, we didn't, want it, we didn't think it was something we wanted to look at. And a really important question was how do we want citizens, the public sector, the voluntary sector, the private sector to be feeling in 12 months time? It's really important to ask, because these are key um, chief execs of the bodies I'm talking about, and how do they want citizens and, and um, those sectors to be feeling in 12 months' time? And it was a really positive thing. We want our residents to be feeling safe and positive and empowered and all these things. Um, but the big bit is in how do we achieve that against this backdrop of um, you know, massive cuts, really. So that was all, all put, put into the melting pot. And the most important bit of the meeting, I felt, was... How do we achieve wanting people to feel safe? How do we achieve some of these things? And what can you and, and your organisation offer? So we're asking chief execs of the primary care trust or of the police to say, what can your organisation do to move this agenda forward? And what are you personally going to go away and put into action in, in your organisation to make it happen? They filled out a nice um, template or questionnaire on that. We've collected all of those. And when I come to the next community partnership meeting that, that I'll be chairing on to make sure that we go back and revisit what people said they were going to do to, to help um, move forward our society and the big society locally because there's some really important stuff that came from that. So the commitment is that that will stay on the agenda. This, this is the agenda I think for the, the, the kind of next nine months that I'm involved with the partnership is to be looking at, at what all this means because it's the rhetoric that's coming out nationally. We need to make sure it happens on, on a local basis. So that's the Community Partnership. If anyone wants to have a chat about um, how the partnership is functioning and, and the sorts of things that are on this agenda, talk to Lorna. Um, no, come and, come and see me at, at some stage or contact me through the usual channels. Um, the Localism Bill. There are 200 plus clauses in the Localism Bill. And if you are a little bit of a... And a uh, or if you haven't got much time, you know, you want to go to sleep in the, in the evening, have a read of the Localism Bill. I haven't. I've read the summaries. And I've also read... A plain English guide to the localism bill, and it isn't a bad document, being as though where it's come from. Um, it is fairly straightforward as, as a document, so it might be worth you uh, checking that one out. It's on the communities and local government website, and what I'm going to talk about just very briefly is, is from there. The bill itself, just just paraphrasing some of the stuff and just reading some of the quotes. The time has come to disperse power more widely in Britain today. 
and the document talks about a huge shift in power from central Whitehall to local public servants and from bureaucrats to communities and individuals. So the rhetoric is about a big shift of power from the centre controlling everything to local areas, to local bureaucrats and to local people. The main measures of this bill um, come under four headings as, as described in the, in, in the bill. They are the freedoms and flexibilities for local government. There's lots of stuff in there about powers to local government to be able to do things differently. The stuff that we're probably more interested in, I'm certainly am, uh, more interested in, is the rights and powers for communities and individuals. The stuff around reform to make the planning system more effective um, and the reform to ensure the decisions about housing are taken locally. So this is in its bill stage and, and there's a really useful document in your pack around white papers, green papers, bills and how it all works. It's really quite a useful summary from the Urban Forum. But this is in the bill stage at the moment. Um, just breaking those four headings down I in into um, a bit more sense, I suppose. The, the first one about the flexibilities and freedoms for local authorities, just touching on that. It's saying that, that local authorities should be free to do anything as long as they do not break other laws. So that is a fair statement. So rather than hands-on approach, it's going to be you're free to do anything in your local area as long as it doesn't break other laws. Um, stuff around elected mayors, something <coughs> they call predetermination around roles of councillors, those sorts of things. Um, you can read that for yourself and understand it more than I, I do. But what's clear in the document, that, that's number one, the other three headings, what's clear is that those freedoms and flexibilities for local governments on their own do not make great places to live. People make great places to live, neighbours make great places to live, volunteers make great places to live, etc, etc. So on its own, that would achieve something, but what's more important, the document is, is saying, is the rights for local uh, people, local communities. And I probably should move on to the slide now. Okay, so the three things that we're just going to look at briefly um, are, starts with the community right to build, to build. hopefully you can see this the slide up there. Um, the, the, the bill talks about the fact that over time lots of good ideas from communities and community groups have been overlooked and the contribution that you make in sponsoring <coughs> community faith organisations has often been um, neglected. So this passing rights to communities and individuals will make it easier for them to get things done. That's the rhetoric. It's going to be easier for us as voluntary community faith organisations and as individuals to get things done, get things done and influence the place we live in. Hence the link to all the work that Dawn has been talking about. The community right to build, as part of um, the neighbourhood planning agenda, this is how we're going to give groups of, this is how, this is the rhetoric, give groups of local people the ability to bring forward small developments. The devil will be in the detail, but that's what it's talking about. So, local people to be looking at new homes, new businesses, new shops. Uh, some of the stuff around housing, uh, new housing um, tenancies and things, is about us being able to suggest that in a local area, and any benefits from the rental of that should be reinvested in the community. <coughs> so th there's stuff here about <coughs> having the ability to bring forward ideas around small developments. I have said the devil is in the detail, as it always is. The community right to challenge. This is particularly interests me, and I'm sure some of the colleagues in the room. Um, again. That, that's what it says in the bill, that for us, this is the potential for local voluntary community faith organisations, local social enterprises, to provide high quality services of good value, and this is important, and deliver services with and through councils. So this is this idea that, that our sector can, over time, start to deliver more and more local, what were traditionally public services, um, with, with <coughs> the local public sector. The actual terminology is the right, to, this is what's going to be, the right to express an interest in taking over the running of a local service. The LA, the local authority, must consider and respond to this challenge. So, I guess this is what it means. We can sit back and go, that youth centre, we don't like how that's been, in, been run. We want a challenge. And we have a right to say we can run that better and more effectively, uh, better quality, etc, etc. And we can propose and submit that and the local authority must consider it and they must respond to this. <coughs> Again, that will be in the detail, but that, that's what the bill talks about. That could open up <coughs> some doors for many of us who provide services in this local area. Um, this one's a bit more complex. Again, that's the text from what we're talking about. But this is about 
protecting lands and, land and buildings that are important to us in communities. Things like swimming pools, ouch, saying that in Dudley, but swimming pools, pubs, meeting rooms, things like that. If we think they're quite valuable to us and they're a community resource, they're where people come together and meet, um, we have an opportunity to say we want to take over that resource. We want to take over that pub or that swimming pool for, for community facilities. Um, in the past, anybody wanting to do that faced significant and particular challenges, i.e. the money, slight, slight problem, um, and the time. If a local council makes it known that it's going to do something with a local community resource, it takes us time as communities to put together any kind of action plan, business plan, try and look at where we get money from, sponsorship, whatever it might be. Under this community right to buy, allegedly it's going to give us more time, well it will know in advance and give us more time to prepare and pull things together. The local authority needs to be, under this, be maintaining a list of assets of community value. So they'll be starting a piece of work that's putting together what they think assets are of community value. Communities can nominate for inclusion assets that are most important to them. So when the local authority goes around and says that's important, that's important, we can actually say, well that's really important to us. That local pub is where lots of our community work, and if you take that out of here, we're in, we're in trouble. Because it's not always obvious where communities congregate, is it? And, as I said before, when any of these come up for sale or change of ownership, Air Sector will have time to develop bids and raise funds to take those over. Not quite sure how that's going to work, but when we're looking at transferring assets from a local um, council, we will have an opportunity and have notification to, to do that. And finally, I'm moving on to one of our own neighbourhood planning. If anyone knows anything about planning systems, I'm sure the people in this room know a lot more than I am. Again, that's the text. The, the rhetoric is that planning does not give the public enough influence over decisions that make a big difference to their lives. This is when they're bringing forward um, planning applications, building big buildings, new uh, shops, things like that. They're saying that these decisions are often made by people who it doesn't affect, and I think we'd all nod at that. You get things built in your neighbourhood, you're not really ever making, being part of that decision. So the bill, this bill proposes that we make the planning system more clearer, more democratic and more effective. And the community has the right to draw up a neighbourhood development plan. So we will have a right to say where we want new houses built, where shops should go, and what they should look like. We wait and see, but uh, that, that's what's being proposed. So there is a change there. There's a lot in there that, that, if we take positives out of it, that is looking to give us more opportunity to say what we want under these new rights in our local area. And if you just show that in true fashion again, that, that's a useful little document if it's a summary still quite thick I know but it's a lot less than the it's called the plain English guide to the localism bill there's lots of resources I'm sure Lorna will point you to the websites but there's lots of resources and I just found that personally fairly simple to, to, to work through so hopefully that's just giving you an overview I'm not an expert on it it's all still unravelling but those are kind of the there are four key headings and the community rights stuff is probably what's most important to us probably links on to what Lorna's going to talk about so thank you, thank you.